Yes. <laughs> then you would tell old Emily it's pathetic the way she daubs her features with cosmetic and plays the gay coquette at 64. I would. And you call Dorla a bore and tell him every ear at court is lame from hearing him brag about his noble name. Precisely. Ah, oh, you're joking. Au contraire. In this regard, there's none I choose to spare. All are corrupt. There's nothing to be seen in court or town but aggravates my spleen. I fall into deep gloom and melancholy when I survey the scene of human folly. Mm. Finding on every hand base flattery, injustice, fraud, self-interest, treachery. Oh, it's too much. <laughs> Mankind has grown so base, I mean to break with the whole human race. This... Philosophic rage is a bit extreme. You have no idea how comical you seem. <laughs> the world won't change, whatever you say or do. And since plain speaking means so much to you, I'll tell you plainly that by being frank, you've earned the reputation of a crank. <laughs> and that you're thought ridiculous when you rage and rant against the manners of the age. So much the better. Just what I wish to hear. No news could be more grateful to my ear. All men are so detestable in my eyes. I should be sorry if they thought me wise. Your hatred's very sweeping, is it not? Quite right. I hate the whole degraded lot. Must all poor human creatures be embraced without distinction by your vast distaste? Even in these bad times, there are surely a few no, who keep... No, I include all men in one dim view. Some men I hate for being rogues. The others I hate because they treat the rogues like brothers. Mm. Notice how tolerant people choose to be toward that bold scoundrel who's filed suit against me. But the whole world knows the shady means by which the lowbrow's grown so powerful and rich and risen to a rank so bright and high that virtue can but blush and merit sigh. But whenever his name comes up in conversation, mm. none will defend his wretched reputation. Call him knave, liar, scoundrel, all the rest. Each head will nod, and no one will protest. And yet, his smirk is seen in every house. He's greeted everywhere with smiles and bows. And when there's any honor to be got by pulling strings, he'll get it, like as not. By God, it chills my heart to see the way men come to terms with evil nowadays. Sometimes, I swear, I'm moved to flee and find some desert land unfouled by humankind. Come, uh, let's forget the follies of the times and pardon mankind for his petty crimes. Let's have an end of rantings and to railings and show some leniency towards human failings. This world requires a pliant rectitude. To stern a virtue makes one stiff and rude. G good sense views all extremes with detestation and bids us to be noble in moderation. The rigid virtues of the ancient days are not for us. They jar with all our ways and ask of us too lofty a perfection. Wise men accept their times without objection and there's no greater folly, if you ask me, than trying to reform society. I take men as they are, or I let them be, teach my soul to bear their frailty, and whether in court or town, whatever the scene, my phlegm's as philosophic as your spleen.